I hope, Senator, after you've lost and the Empire reigns over the galaxy unopposed, you'll find some comfort in the knowledge that you fought according to the rules. So spoke Saw Gerrera, one of Star Wars canon's most fascinating and most controversial characters. In case you haven't consumed any Dark Times era Star Wars media in the past few years, Saw Gerrera was a character introduced in Star Wars The Clone Wars as the leader of a group of Republic-aligned rebels on Onderon. Rogue One, Andor, Rebels, The Bad Batch, Fallen Order, and more stories from the Imperial era have gone on to feature Saw and his partisans, who represent the extreme wing of the Rebellion. Radicals willing to do anything to stop the Empire. All of these stories have depicted Saw as morally dubious, leading a portion of the fanbase to develop a deep dislike for Saw and his followers. But let's play devil's advocate for a moment, or rather for 10 minutes. Was Saw actually all that bad in the grand scheme of things? Attention, Sergeant on deck! First, a fun fact. The concept for Saw Guerrera actually came from George Lucas himself, who conceptualized him as a grittier, edgier rebel leader for his planned Star Wars Underworld series and used the Clone Wars to introduce him. Underworld, for those who don't know, was how Lucas intended to continue the Star Wars universe. It was planned to be a gritty and or like live action series set during the Imperial era, meant to act as a narrative bridge between the prequel and original trilogies. Everything we've ever heard about it sounds awesome, and it's tragic that Underworld has not and likely will never see the light of day. But as a bit of consolation, a wealth of new canon stories have taken Saw Gerrera in exactly the direction Lucas intended. In the Clone Wars, Saw doesn't stand out all that much, but it's in the Imperial era that he really came into his own, for better or worse. Saw Gerrera, and whoever he could muster to follow him, waged an uncompromising war against it, fighting straight through the Dark Times until they were destroyed on Jeddah a few days before the Battle of Yavin. Saw spent 20 straight years fighting, spending that entire length of time severely outnumbered and outgunned, with just an assortment of scrappy partisan groups to back him up. Even during the height of the Empire's power, when many future rebels were hesitant to even consider fighting, Saw gave the cause his all. During this time, Saw gained quite a reputation, but not a good one. He and his partisans were absolutely ruthless, to the point they alienated some people who might otherwise have been inclined to join the rebellion. Like our good friend Anakin Skywalker, Saw Gerrera was quite the connoisseur of war crimes. He and his partisans were known to torture prisoners, break standard rules of engagement, and even kill civilians if they believed it would further their cause against the Empire. Guerrero saw all these things as necessary evils, tactics that the power of the Empire forced on anyone who was serious about dismantling it, but the Empire, and many of the more moderate rebels, saw it as terrorism. Mon Mothma, in particular, hated Saw and believed his tactics were counterproductive. Most of the time, the narrative framing of Star Wars stories agrees with Mon Mothma when it comes to Saw Gerrera. But is this an honest framing? Don't get us wrong, Saw is absolutely an edgelord and has absolutely done some pretty terrible things. We aren't defending that by any stretch. We're more interested in how the bad parts balance out in the grand scheme of things. The Empire framed Saw Gerrera as a terrorist but it did the same to the likes of Mon Mothma and rebels who actually abided by the laws of war. Their use of such a term was meaningless, just a snarl word used to vilify anyone who resisted the Empire's own reign of terror. Saw would argue that, most of the time, the difference between a terrorist and a freedom fighter is just whether or not the speaker supports the cause in question, and that he and his partisans were waging a righteous revolution and doing what they needed to for the sake of the galaxy. Luthen Rail from Andor put it another way. Like Luthen, Saw and his partisans were forced to use the tools of their enemy to defeat them. To burn their decency so that the people of the galaxy could have a future free of Imperial tyranny. In this, Saw and the partisans are meant to be a representation of real world World War II era partisan groups who are also sometimes forced to resort to untoward tactics 
to liberate their homes from Nazi Germany. This is a good angle to understand Saw Gerrera from. He was fighting an asymmetric war against a massively powerful, unfathomably evil empire, and he was willing to do whatever it took to win that fight, because the consequences of defeat would be far worse than anything he or his partisans were even capable of doing. Sometimes, Saw believed, taking the fight to the empire required acts that would be immoral outside of war. Saw Guerrero and the partisans engaged in total war against the empire, whereas the rebel alliance held back. For those unfamiliar with the doctrine of total war, it means that a belligerent classifies anything that contributes to an enemy nation's war effort including things like civilian industry, agriculture, and sometimes even civilians themselves as legitimate targets. In the real world, some inarguably just wars have been total wars. Consider again World War II. Total war doctrine is never without controversy, nor should it ever be. But in the case of the rebellion against the empire, it's the kind of war that had been forced on the galaxy, regardless of whether rebel groups went in for it or not. The Empire spent its existence waging a kind of total war, giving no quarter to any who opposed it. The partisans were simply responding in kind. Indeed, the doctrine of total war covers just about all of the more controversial aspects of Saw's fight against the Empire. With the notable exception of torture, which is always unambiguously bad and also just doesn't work. Even then, it's also worth noting that Saw never killed civilians intentionally. They were always collateral damage. Just collateral damage he was perfectly willing to accept when he felt it necessary. That's not to say that Saw's total war methods were necessarily right or just. The morality of total war is a far more complicated question that's ultimately beyond the scope of this video. But at the end of the day, he and the partisans were, at worst, just responding in kind to the barbarism of the empire, giving them a taste of their own medicine. Furthermore, they played an essential role in the Empire's defeat. They kept up the fight for 20 years, giving the more moderate rebels room to grow strong, and given that, you can understand why Saw chafed at people like Mon Mothma trying to tone police him and his fighters. In some cases, Star Wars' treatment of Saw Gerrera is reminiscent of a fairly common storytelling trope, where a relatable antagonist character with valid points is made to kill a baby or do something that's also inarguably evil to alienate the audience from them. Star Wars doesn't go that far with Saw, of course. He's still unambiguously on the good side, and his worst is still a hell of a lot better than the Empire's best. But for all Mon Mothma talks about Saw Gerrera breaking the rules of engagement, celebrated heroes like Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi are shown doing that more often and more egregiously than Saw ever is, and sometimes, Saw makes fairly reasonable, if hard, tactical decisions that are rather dishonestly framed negatively. Consider the finale of The Bad Batch's second season. In the season's second to last episode, The Bad Batch bumps into Saw and the partisans in Moff Tarkin's fortress on Eriadu. The Bad Batch is on Eriadu in the hopes of tracking down a facility where the Empire is imprisoning wayward clones. The partisans are there to blow up the fortress which they hope will kill Tarkin and a bunch of other key Imperial military leaders. Both missions go sideways, forcing both teams to flee the facility. Saw, who gave the Bad Batch a fair warning to get the hell out of the fortress before the partisans blew it, detonates the explosives on the way out. This indirectly leads to Tech, spoiler alert, falling to his death. A lot of people's knee-jerk reaction to this moment was to hate on Saw and blame him for killing Tech, but this is a pretty stellar example of Star Wars framing a tough but correct command decision as Saw Gerrera being a bad person. At the end of the day, the Partisan's mission was considerably more important. Contrary to what was argued in the episode, killing Tarkin and the scum he was meeting with would have dealt a huge blow to the Empire. By ending the threat of Tarkin and his abominable ideals, Saw likely would have saved billions of lives. Without Tarkin, the Death Star project may never have been completed, and that, we would argue, is vastly more important than tracking down some stray clones. Saw also gave the Bad Batch an advance warning, and while it ended up not being enough to save tech, at the end of the day, you have to expect casualties in war. Saw's choices were to blow up Tarkin's fortress in the hopes of killing Tarkin, or at least some of his top personnel, 
or to throw away the entire mission, regardless of the partisan blood that had already been shed, because going through with it carried the risk of killing a handful of renegade clones in the process. He made the right call. It sucks that tech died, but such is war. So that's our analysis of Saw Guerrera. We've given him the benefit of the doubt in this video. We tend to take a bit of a dimmer view of him, though he's still ultimately good in our eyes. But what do you think? What are your thoughts on Saw Guerrera? Free to post your thoughts in the comments section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.